Alright, so now we're going to start some actual fabrication on this robot. Probably what you've all been waiting for. Your Follow Me robot will have its own unique chassis, depending on what your robot is ultimately designed for. The chassis I'll fabricate is going to be very basic, really nothing more than a platform with wheels that can roll around on mostly level surfaces. It will be able to travel over most ordinary outdoor terrain, like asphalt, sidewalks, and low grass, like you'd see in a park, but probably not on a beach or on any soft, sandy, or rocky soil. It will be fabricated using various parts and materials from my personal junk pile. There won't be a whole lot of design or measurement done, as it isn't meant to be a step-by-step -step process for someone to replicate. The fabrication will also involve more than a bit of eyeballing, trial fitment, and judgment as it proceeds. For my robot, I'm going to do my best to only use fairly common hand and power tools, tools that you likely already own or that can be easily purchased. Like a handsaw, <laughs> or a drill, or maybe a screwdriver. Oh. Initially, I had ideas for fabrication that involved using some more specialized tools, such as a welder or an angle grinder. But I decided that since many people watching might not have such tools, I would instead try to build my chassis without using them. A common problem when it comes to building a robot using surplus materials is coming up with a plan. Planning and design can be difficult to do in advance since you may not know exactly how everything can or will go together at the start. You instead need to be creative to work out solutions to problems as they arise. Thinking outside of the box is paramount. It is as much an art as it is engineering. So let's go to the shop and start fabricating. So what I want to do first is mount these L brackets to the uh, hub and rim of this wheel. And the way I'm going to do this, easiest way, I'm just going to position the bracket in the position I need it. Then I'm going to take my center punch and just uh, center punch the holes just through there. And uh, that'll uh, give me the marks I need in order to drill the holes through the rim and uh, then pass some uh, bolts through. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I got it positioned here. Carefully get this as close to the center as can. Doesn't have to be perfect. And that marks the first hole. And do the same there. That marks the second. And uh, I can show you. You can see the marks there. And uh, I'll just do the same for the other side. Rotate it 180 degrees. Line the bracket up. And center punch. And uh, you can see that I got them there too. So while they're not exactly perfect, I can probably uh, I can probably fix that up a little bit. Um, they will do the job. Probably just slide this one over just a slight bit. And that looks more in place. And just punch it there. So, uh, so uh, that's uh, that's our holes there, or our center punches. Now we'll just uh, drill them out.
And there we have uh, we have our holes through. Now all I need to do is just uh, these holes are just kind of pilot holes, so I just need to uh, widen them up, and then uh, I can uh, get some uh, bolts and mount the L brackets. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'll be right back. So uh, here we have the uh, holes that we've made a little bit wider now so that uh, we can pass the bolts through easily. So I just got to go and find some bolts and uh, get that taken care of. So I have here one of my wheels that's uh, drilled out and uh, some of the hardware that I'm going to be using. Um, my two uh, angle brackets here. Uh, hose clamp for clamping around the shaft collar and uh, this is a tool a uh, allen wrench to uh, clamp the shaft collar I just have it out I was playing around with it and then I have these uh, these uh, small machine screws and uh, various nuts got some nylock nuts here for the machine screws and or bolts or whatever you want to call them and uh, then these nuts here are just going to act as spacers, kind of like what I uh, had in uh, uh, some of the other uh, earlier uh, pictures uh, that I showed. Um, so these spacers will uh, go on the outside, uh, just kind of like that. And uh, there will be two stacked on top of each other. And then uh, the uh, angle bracket will go through there and uh, will go right, right there. And bolt will come through and will cinch it all down with uh, with uh, some uh, screwdrivers and whatnot so that's uh, what we're going to do all right so we'll just uh got one of these we need two of them take one of these screws whoops <laughs> put it through like that add the spacer uh, nuts over put that down like that and then uh, we'll take uh, one of the nylock nuts and uh We'll just uh, hand tighten it. Won't get it all the way tight. It's uh, kind of better to uh, leave things a little bit untight to give some uh, room for things to have some play. Uh, the inner, uh, the inner, uh, the inner screw or bolt doesn't need a uh, doesn't need a need spacers because um, it's a little bit too close to the to this plastic hub right here, anyhow, and. Uh, on top of that, that plastic hub acts as a spacer anyhow for this end of the uh, bracket. So we have two there, and uh, brackets attached. Just do the other side here. Put that through. A couple of the nuts. That on down. And uh, hand tighten this on. Thread that one through. that and hand tighten this down there we go all right come on be good ah, there we go <laughs> I don't want to cross kind of cross thread in there for a little bit all right and I use uh, you know you know this is basically what's gonna look like these are gonna be like that and we'll tighten this all down so here's what it looks like with all the uh, nuts and bolts uh, tightened down. And uh, then all we have to uh, all we have to do is can put that over the uh, shaft of the motor, tighten it down, put the uh, hose clamp over that, tighten it down to these, and that'll lock it to the uh, shaft of the motor. So uh, we can do that. I can go ahead and show you what that'll look like. Uh, but we won't be uh, doing that permanently because, uh, well, we still have other parts to make. So <laughs> we'll get uh, we'll get that done. Let me uh, show you that. All right. So here we have the wheel with our brackets on it and our motor that we're going to attach the wheel to, our shaft collar, and our hose clamp. What we're going to first do is we're going to first take the uh, hose clamp and we're just going to slip it right over the uh, 
right over these uh, brackets. Just got to get it on there just right, and there we go. And just slip it on like that. And this, this will fit right down in there, just like that. So, take our motor, take our shaft collar, and put it on there. And then we just use our Allen wrench to tighten the shaft collar down to the, to the uh, shaft. And uh, for right now, we don't really care because uh, where, where we're positioning that shaft collar. Because uh, we're not, uh, we're just, I'm just demonstrating this here. But uh, then we just take this and the wheel slips over. And then we can put the hose clamp up a little bit higher. Just like that. And then we can take the screwdriver and tighten the hose clamp down. And once we have the hose clamp tightened down, then that locks the uh, wheel onto the shaft of the motor. And uh, we're all good. Now what we're going to do what we're going to do next is we're going to make that uh, make that nut that'll go inside there, and, uh, and then we can slip that in there, and that'll uh, keep this from wobbling around too much because this is actually this wheel's actually going to be uh, brought out a little bit further. So uh, let me uh, get on to uh, building that. So here's what I'm going to do. I have this nut here, this acorn cap nut. And I'm going to take my hacksaw that I have here and I'm going to clamp it into my vise and then saw off that cap part because I don't need it. And then once I have that sawed off, I'm going to take, take my file and I'm going to round off these corners. Just a little bit. It doesn't need to be a lot. And then showing you this uh, spare wheel I have. This cap nut will then be able to, once those corners are rounded off, will be able to fit right down into that hole and around the shaft of the motor so that uh, it can support the end of the, uh, the end of the motor inside the wheel and then uh, we can put our uh, spring clip on top of that. So uh, let me get on to that. Now we'll first just uh, take, our, take our vise and uh, open it up here. This vice is just some uh, inexpensive thing that I bought at uh, that I bought at Harbor Freight. Doesn't co doesn't really cost too much. I think maybe I don't know maybe ten fifteen dollars. You know, tighten it down. Very useful for a n number of things. Then we're going to take our uh, take our hacksaw and carefully, hopefully. Start a groove. Easier said than done. Well, it's kind of tilting here, so I'm gonna have to adjust that. But essentially, we're gonna go ahead and uh, complete sawing that off, and then I'll show you uh, show you what it looks like and uh, show you the filing. So uh, let me finish that up, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so we have here the uh, we have the screw the cap cut off. There's the cap here. Got it all cut off. It was actually a nut cert nut or not a nut cert a nylock, but that's not a big deal. Probably uh, probably remove this uh, nylon piece if we really wanted to. I'm not sure it really matters. Uh, so next we're just going to uh, file off these edges. And the reason I chose this nut over you know some other kind of nut is that. Uh, other nuts, they were actually uh, they were actually too too big, too tall um, to fit in there right. Um, and I just had these uh, these extras hanging around, not doing anything, so uh, they seem to fit fit fine. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, file these edges down. I'm gonna move my uh, move my hacksaw away. Yeah, I ended up having to actually uh, clamp this in place. It was getting kind of uh, getting kind of squirrely on me as I was uh, hacksawing away. So I uh, clamped it in place, put my clamps on here. Love this thing. <laughs> All right, so 
we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and do that. File this thing down and uh, go from there. All right, so I got it mounted in my vise here, and we'll just uh, all we have to do is just run our file over these corners a little bit. You can see, just taking off a rounding it off a little bit. We're not using this as a, as a nut, so it doesn't matter if we round it off. And uh, don't know, you know, this is a, kind of a process of trial and error. But uh, we just basically have to uh, do this, do these to all uh, all corners. Got one done here. Got five more to do, and uh, then we can uh, try uh, try testing, try uh, try uh, testing test fitting it inside the uh, hole, and uh, you know keep doing that until we get something that fits. So I'm just going to finish this up, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I'm on my last one here. Just gonna file it down, and then we can uh, do a test fit. So go ahead and give it a few runs with this file here. All right. Now we can just open that up. You can see if this will uh, this will actually drop in. I don't know if it will or won't. Guess we'll see. Oh, not quite. Needs still a little bit more work. So uh, I'll go around again. <laughs> Just something you got to do. Be right back. Okay, so here we have the nut now. Got it uh, nicely rounded. He ended up having to actually take that piece of nylock insert out because it was actually interfering with the end of the shaft. But uh, this uh, thing, it fits, you can see it fits in there, and I could press this whole thing in just with my thumbs if I wanted to, but I'm not just yet. And then uh, this can fit up through. You can see how, uh, you can see how uh, this uh, supports the end of the shaft now where there wasn't any support, and uh, we can take that... Uh, take that clip and put it right into the uh, right into that groove I don't know if you can see that but there's a groove on the end of this shaft might be easier to see this way you can see the groove right there and uh, clip it on and you know that'll hold the whole thing together once it's uh, once it's all put together so you know that's uh, basically does it so I'm going to uh, finish this up and uh, do the other nut so we got two of them now you might be wondering is there an easier way I could have did this well Quite possibly if I had enough washers and they were the right size to fit in here, but I didn't have any of that size. Uh, it turned out that this uh, that this nut was actually the best solution, you know, without going out and buying something and trying to avoid that. You know, it's a, kind of the whole thing about junk botics is uh, to use what we already have if we can. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do the other nut and uh, then... Uh, well, I'll be back and let you know what I'm going to do next. Check out the Junk Box GitHub repository for more information about this tutorial and other projects. If you like this video and want to receive notification about future videos, please subscribe to my channel. And again, while you're down there, hit that like button. As always, thank you for watching, and remember, keep calm and keep junking. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.